Good morning, folks. Quick update over at spaceweathernews.com. And by the way, this is our website. Those are my solar notes under the latest news section. And I developed this site for us, specifically for how we watch the sun. Anyway, solar flaring is dropping out. This is due to magnetic complexity leaving the region as the trailing negative umbra, the red on the left, is decaying and separating from its delta partner, the blue just to the left of that. Now the positive development in the middle is the best chance for flaring there. Watch how the region has changed so much in just the last two days. The solar wind is calming. Density still a bit jumpy, but the smoother yellow shows we await the last eruption impact. The radiation storm is over now. After hitting level 3 two days ago, the magnetic storms are weakened and fading out and the magnetosphere is calming too. It's all an act. The calm appearance is actually anticipation as this explosion has sent a shockwave our way, the fourth to come in just a few days. NASA has now moved up their arrival prediction to this afternoon. Now both NASA and myself predict impact today while NOAA is still looking at tomorrow morning. And with a shockwave on the way, Space weather energy is integrating after kicking the crap out of our magnetic shield. And this comes just as we are a few days away from more planetary geometry. Venus and Saturn lining up with the Sun soon, along with Mercury and Jupiter. And finally, Venus and Jupiter are conjoining from Earth's perspective as well. We are also technically under the influence of that northern Earth-facing coronal hole, even though it only has moderate power. And while that's a lot of quake factors, even if the main indices are only moderately significant, Japan may have kicked off our next uptick. Anyway, apart from sunspots and a CME incoming, I'm also eyeing the three filaments facing Earth today. Those dark curls there present an eruption threat. Let's go ahead and take a look at the top articles for today. Got a new look at pollution of fine particulates. Some areas are worse than expected, others not so bad. I really do love Chandra because what looks like nothing to the naked eye can absolutely dazzle in X-ray or radio waves or infrared. This shows X-ray energy echoes bouncing off cloud layers between Earth and the object in question. Lastly folks, it's been more than a whole year since Swarm gave us an update, but now they have. A press release and a bunch of papers. I'm blasting through those as fast as I can and will discuss those on the website soon. But for now, suffice to say that our field does continue to weaken, but we get no new pole positions, field strength measurements, or other vital long-term statistics to help our tracking of a potential reversal event. Top two weather stories today. The U.S. is in for a major heat wave soon, with the jet stream locking in and readying to allow all the tropical heat to summer up here with us. Not cool. By the way, we'll have major flood potential tonight and some severe alerts where this low in convergence can be found. The other top story in weather is the explanation for why New Zealand is breaking their cold records right now. Reinforced pressure drive there, pushing Antarctic freeze right to them. I'll leave it to you to find the three key lows in Europe, another one down in the southwest Pacific, and the system scorching the west coast of the U.S. and Canada already with nothing but its wind drive. We've got some current conditions and shots of our star to close, including a legion of filaments cresting the disk all at once. Updates on today's shockwave impact will be coming at spaceweathernews.com. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.